Hey everybody, welcome to week three of distance learning. Two weeks down, five more to go. I really wish I was kidding. Unfortunately, I'm not kidding. Um, however, on the bright side, uh, I will say that most of us are really starting to get into our groove with online learning, figuring out um, how exactly to tackle what's expected of us, um, seeing more and more of you make sure that you get your work in and get your work in on time and asking great questions. So I'm really proud of all of you for adapting, but I know that you miss each other, uh, a lot of you miss school and you never thought you would, and I definitely miss all of you, and I'm hoping that these five weeks go by as fast as possible. On to uh, updates for this week. So last night I did poll everybody and I asked um, if you would prefer a playlist style of work this week or a hyperdoc style of work, and it was pretty close. There was only a few uh, people um, who tipped HyperDoc uh, as the preferred method. Um, however, I did decide that I was gonna stick with playlists for this week, uh, just because so many of us are getting used to this style, um, but I think most likely I'll try out a HyperDoc next week. Thank you so much to everybody who's been giving me great feedback about how this is going. I'm really eager to make sure that what we're doing here in social studies works well for you, that you understand, and also that we're learning about topics that are interesting to us during this time. I also want to update you on your journals. A lot of you have been seeing your journal grades going in, and I'm going to show you right now uh, the criteria for me grading your journals. So if you haven't already gotten your journal grade back, when you do get it, if you want to improve for this week, you should look at the feedback that I left you on your actual journal, and then also look at this rubric to see how you can bring your writing to the next level. I'm loving reading your journals. It's making me feel um, much closer to what's going on for you, but also I just love that a lot of you are really using it in a very authentic and valuable way as a place to process everything that's going on, and I love to see that. I also want to talk for a minute about reassessment. A few people have reached out to me about um, previous quizzes that you would like to fix your score on, and I'm not going to be assigning quizzes while we're doing distance learning, but you can do reassessment, and that reassessment is going to be done through Flipgrid. So at the bottom of your playlist this week, it gives you directions on how to access Flipgrid and you can reassess for any learning target that is in your grade uh, that is a quiz grade. All right, I feel like Carl Zeus, but in this next segment uh, of our weekly video, I'm going to call what I'm watching. I was very blown away last week to learn that many of you are relying solely on either your parents or on me for news and are not seeking out too much news uh, yourself. Um, I really encourage you to look at more news, but I am going to give you uh, a couple of things that I personally have my eye on right now. So right now I am looking at some situations where people who normally in our society we wouldn't really look out for are being really impacted by the coronavirus. So for example, um, I've been having my eye on Rikers Island. Rikers Island is an infamous jail in New York City that actually houses 5,000 inmates. So for example, that's about five times the size of a lot of our really large local high schools like Oberfeld five times the size. And as a result, um, it is very dangerous for the coronavirus to spread around uh, a prison that is as big as Rikers Island. And as you can probably imagine, the isolating ourselves and quarantining that we're doing right now is very hard to do in prison. So as of right now, there are 167 inmates on Rikers Island that currently have coronavirus who have tested positive and 130 staff members. So you can imagine if they already have that kind of numbers, 
how devastatingly the coronavirus is going to spread around Rikers Island. Um, it's very sad, and a lot of people are calling on the mayor of New York City and the governor of New York State to release more people from Rikers Island who are there on lower level offenses and to really try to dwindle down that population uh, to prevent what will probably be a very devastating impact of the coronavirus there. I've also been paying close attention to ICE. I'm very sad to say that ICE has continued to follow through with deportations during this time and has actually been using the fact that so many people are home and not at their jobs to do more of showing up at people's homes um, and arresting them in order to deport them. As you may or may not know, a lot of these people who are arrested or who are caught trying to cross the border are kept in what's called an immigration detention center, which are basically jails. And the, the living conditions in these detention centers are worse than jails in a lot of ways. This, as you can imagine, is very dangerous right now with the coronavirus spreading. And so far, I have not been seeing ICE or our government making any changes about how to protect um, these immigrants who are being held in detention centers. On to our next segment, which is our topics of the week. So this week, we're going to focus on two topics. One is government related and one is not. Um, and the first topic is the U.S. Census. So several of you have reached out to me because your family has received something in the mail um, that's talking about the U.S. Census and asking them to fill out this paperwork. And so a lot of people are like, what is this paperwork and should we fill it out? And the answer is 100% yes. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a video um, about the census and then I'll say more about it. In America, we all count, no matter where we call home, how we worship, or who we love. And the 2020 census is how that great promise is kept, because this is the count that informs where hundreds of billions in funding will go each year for things like education, healthcare, and programs that touch us all. Complete the census online, by phone, or by mail. Shape your future. Start here at 2020census.gov. So the purpose of the U.S. Census is to count, literally count up every single American in the United States. And this is important for a lot of different reasons. For one, the amount of people that live in a certain area determines how much funding from the federal government that area gets, how many schools that area can open, how much represent, representation that area has in uh, Congress. So let's say that right now there is 1.5 million people um, in San Jose as of the last census, which happened in 2010 because it takes place every 10 years. Let's say this year when they count again in San Jose, they find out that we have 2 million people living in San Jose now. What that means is we're going to get more money from the U.S. government in order to run our schools, uh, fix our streets, run community programs, and it would probably change the number of representatives that we have in Congress. For example, right now in the state of California, there are 53 representatives that sit on the House of Representatives for the state of California. But if the census... Uh, decided that we actually need more people now because our population has grown in California, maybe we could end up with 55 seats in the House of Representatives, which is great for California because it means we have more of a voice. So the census is incredibly important. It makes sure that each and every one of us have a voice in our government and also that our community gets the funding and resources we deserve. So you definitely want your family to fill out the census, and this shows you the different opportunities of how they can fill it out. By mid-March, you'll receive an invitation in the mail to complete the 2020 census. Then you'll be able to respond online, by phone, or by mail. It's that easy.
Unfortunately, when not everybody fills out the census, it means that some areas end up being undercounted, which means that they don't get the resources that they deserve. And the biggest group that ends up going uncounted is our immigrant community. And that's because uh, the government doesn't do enough effort to make sure that the immigrant community is informed about uh, the census and how it works and the fact that it's safe. So even if your family is undocumented, that they don't have papers, they can and should still fill out the census. There is no question on there that asks you if you're a citizen or not. And it's really just for the purpose of counting up everybody. And so hopefully you encourage your parents to go ahead and fill out the census. Uh, I think we have until the summer to fill it out. Now, on to our biggest topic of the week, which I'm going to start with a story. A couple of weeks ago, a woman was walking down the street in San Francisco, and she was on her way to the gym. She was about my age, and she had her headphones in when she heard this man from across the sidewalk uh, screaming at her. So she took out her headphone, and the man was screaming um, some things about her being Asian or being Chinese. And as a large bus drove by, he yelled at the bus, run her over, run her over. And so the girl put her headphones back in and tried to walk away quickly. And the man ended up um, approaching her and actually spitting at her. I can't imagine how shocking something like that is here in California, here in San Francisco. I also can't imagine um, what that feels like to be discriminated against uh, for your ethnicity all of a sudden out of nowhere. And this is something that is on the rise due to coronavirus. Asian Americans in our country are, are experiencing a lot of what is called xenophobia. Xenophobia is when people discriminate against or are afraid of people who are different than, than them. So you can have xenophobia based on somebody's ethnicity, based on somebody's sexual orientation, based on somebody's religion. And as a historian, I take that thing, that kind of thing very seriously because throughout history, in the face of different national emergencies, there has been lots of examples of xenophobia that comes up as a result. For example, uh, when the Japanese attacked at Pearl Harbor and we went into uh, World War II, Japanese Americans, people who had been born here, lived here their whole entire lives, considered themselves to be fully American, were extremely ex uh, discriminated against to the point where they were actually placed in special camps called internment camps that they could not leave. So it's extremely disappointing um, to see that so many people are taking the coronavirus as an opportunity to be xenophobic towards Asian Americans. And I hate to say it, but it's actually something that I had to bring up in our class um, because I've seen those jokes. And, you know, sometimes we think that something is just a joke, but we don't understand how big that can actually get, how deep that can hurt people, but even how dangerous it can be. There are actually people out there who are harming people um, who are Asian American, and that is something that we're going to focus on this week. So our big question this week is, why do Americans resort to xenophobia during these national crises? Why is it that we tend to single in on a single ethnicity and discriminate against them when our country is experiencing an emergency? And you're going to be focusing on both those past examples and the coronavirus today. You're going to be using Padlet, uh, New ZLA, and Flocabulary in order to dig deeper into those topics. But at the end of the week, um, you're going to be putting together a little quick project, which is a piece of activism. And activism is in social studies when you take a topic and you actually do something about it. So at the end of the week, you are going to be creating something that sends a message against xenophobia, against racism. And this activism piece um, could be in the form of a TikTok video. You could make a little ad or commercial on Flipgrid 
or you could also uh, design some sort of art piece or sketch notes that reflect what you learned about this week. Those are just three examples. If you have another idea, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, as always, continue to reach out about anything that you need, um, about any questions that you have. Stop by my office hours and say hi. Uh, I miss you deeply, but I look forward to seeing your learning and seeing what you create this week. See ya!